On this episode of the Massive Agent Podcast, we're going to be talking about a few things that will make the biggest difference in your business. They're extremely simple, but it's all about the follow through. The Massive Agent Podcast. We lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You're weak. I've had better. better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast, episode number five. Thank you so much for listening. This is going to be a pretty awesome episode. There's a lot of things we're going to talk about today that, that are simple, things that are, are very common sense, but the vast majority of us in real estate have gotten away from doing these things. It's it. I don't know what it is, but it's hard to stay consistent with some of the most basic things. And so we're going to talk about what those things are, because if you're able to consistently do these few things, you're never going to starve. You're never going to have to worry about where the next deal is coming from. You will have business. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about those and that's going to be awesome. I also have a pretty cool announcement. We're going to do something kind of fun because we're brand new here at the Massive Agent Podcast. We're just launching this thing. And being that I am a marketer, I'm going to do some marketing trying to market my own podcast. If you have a podcast and you want to get people to find your podcast, you really need to focus on iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews are huge if you're a podcaster. And so I'm going to be running a contest. During the first two months of launching a podcast is the most crucial. You want to get a, as much attention, as much energy, as many reviews, as many downloads and listens as you possibly can right from the get. And so I'm thinking, let's do a contest. Let's incentivize getting the word out. Let's incentivize it. And so here's what we're going to do. Now, this contest is going to run from today until the end of February. So until February 28th, 2018, this contest will be in effect. Now we're going to give out to the winner a $100 Amazon gift card. So one of you guys is going to pick up 100 bucks to Amazon. And who doesn't love Amazon? You can get absolutely anything on Amazon. It's kind of scary, but awesome all at the same time. There's two ways to enter. Number one, leave us an honest review in iTunes. Now iTunes makes it a little difficult to leave. It's a little confusing to try to find the button to leave a review. So if you've already subscribed to the podcast, first off, thank you. If you haven't yet, what the hell? Let's get on that. Now you have to actually search for Massive Agent Podcast, find the podcast in the search results, click on it, scroll down, and you'll see you know the average of reviews. And then right under that, the writer review link. That's where you find it. You have to go through the search in order to find it even if you've already subscribed, that's just how they have it set up. So go through there and write a review. Once you do, screenshot it. Screenshot the review that you just left. Take that screenshot over to the Massive Agent Podcast Facebook page. Look for the post where I talk about this specific contest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a post announcing this contest. Comment on it, post your screenshot. There's one entry. Now, if you also share a link to this podcast in another Facebook group or on your personal profile, or on your business page. Just so, If you're sharing it, that's going to get you one other entry. Screenshot that as well and post that in the same place. At the end of February, I'm going to add all those entries up and randomly pick one. And one of you guys is going to win a $100 Amazon gift card. All right, for you guys that are just tuning in for the very first time, if this is the first episode you've listened to, you're probably wondering what the hell is the Massive Agent Podcast. This is a real estate marketing podcast, but we're going to do a deep dive into specific marketing techniques, ideas, strategies that you can do as a real estate agent or a loan officer to get more business, to sell more homes, to close more loans. That's our goal here. We want to give you ideas, give you tools, encourage you so that you can get more business and ultimately sell more real estate. So if that interests you, if you, if you also have that goal, you're in the right place. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Make sure you tune in at the end of the show because we will have another massive Q&A. Today's question is a pretty good one. I think a lot of you guys might have the same question. I'm not going to spill the beans just yet, so stay tuned. At the end of the show, we'll get to uh, the second week of massive Q&A. That's where we take a question from you, the listener, that you've posted on our Facebook page, and we answer it live on the show. 
even though it's not really live. It's recorded, but you get the you get the idea. All right, guys. Now today we're getting back to the basics. Next week we're gonna do a deep dive into some new technology, something that not many people are taking advantage of, and we're gonna show you how you can do that. Next week's gonna be cool. This is almost like the opposite. It's very low tech. It it actually requires no technology. It's just a basic, but it's gonna help you sell more homes. Now I really want you guys to ask yourself this question. Okay, if you're if you're driving. I want you to set a reminder to come back and answer this question. I, I really want you to think about this. It's It only takes a couple minutes, but I want your undivided attention because it's extremely, extremely important and extremely powerful. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try something. I think this would be kind of cool. Some of you guys are listening to this in the car while you're driving. Some of you are listening to it at home. All right. It's If it's not playing in your AirPods or, or earbuds, it's playing through a speaker. I'm going to try something. I'm going to, if you're driving, safety is our utmost concern here at Massive Agent Podcast. Safety first. So we don't want you grabbing your phone as you're listening to this while you're cruising 80 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone. Who would ever do that, right? We don't want you to grab your phone and set a reminder. So I'll do it for you. So you guys with iPhones and Androids, set them down. Okay. As long as they can hear me, we're going to be good. Here we go. Hey, Siri, remind me in 90 minutes. Sit down and answer Dustin's question. Okay. I updated the reminder. So she updated the reminder. Okay. Now for you guys with Androids, I'm sorry. Nobody's perfect. But I've, I've got your back too. Okay, Google. Remind me in 45 minutes. Answer Dustin's question honestly. So there. I'm putting your safety first here at the Massive Agent Podcast. All right. Now here, <laughs> jokes aside, here's what I want you to think about. Whether you've been in the business for a year or 30 years, it doesn't matter. I want you to think about what was the biggest, most lucrative sale that you've ever had. Or, okay, because we're not all driven by money all the time. Like, it's important. That's how we make a living. But it's not the only motivation. So what was your biggest, most lucrative, or your most enjoyable transaction? Most rewarding transaction. Okay, really think about that. What was that transaction? Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was 20 years ago. And then I want you to think about how did you get that transaction? Where did it come from? Was it a lead that came through your Zillow leads? Was it someone from a Facebook ad? Was it your neighbor referring somebody? Think about it. I mean, sometimes we just gloss over this stuff like, oh, cool, you know, and we take it for granted. It's, it's such a hint to you of where you should be focusing your time and attention. I do this a few times a year because I, you know, I'm busy. I can't do this all the time and I forget to, but a few times a year, sit down, think about what was the best transaction you've done recently or ever, and then think about how you got it. So a few years ago, before I really got into the content marketing stuff, and I know I haven't really told my story of how I got to where I'm at today. I'm going to do that on a, on an upcoming episode. Today's not the day though. Um, but just know, you know, I haven't always been into content marketing. I haven't always understood the importance of marketing. I I didn't always understand Facebook ads and everything. I used to do door knocking. I used to make phone calls. I used to do all that stuff, chasing down business. And so for, for a long time, my biggest source or where I got my biggest, most lucrative transaction was from door knocking. And so up until I got into content marketing, I kept door knocking because it was paying off for me. Now, since then, there's, you know, I've completely changed that. I do not door knock anymore, but I kept doing what was bringing in the best deals. It's so important to know what that is. If it's referrals from clients, you've got to work on client appreciation. You've got to really pour into your past clients because you want more of those great deals, right? You want more of those super enjoyable transactions. You want more of those very lucrative transactions. So don't just blow that off. I want you to really think about that. Since I was kind enough to set your reminder for you on your phone, when that reminder goes off, sit down and think about it. It really only takes a few minutes. All right, now for you to understand where I think you need to be focusing your thought this week and focusing your efforts, I'm going to tell you a quick story, all right? And I'm sure this has happened to you guys, but I think we take it for granted when it happens and we don't understand or we completely just know, look past and brush past what just happened. So 
I got a couple deals recently and I was thinking about how they came about and it's kind of crazy. There's this thin thread that weaves its way from one event, one interaction, one meeting to another. And it's so thin. It's such a thin thread. It's mind boggling because if one thing didn't happen, if you didn't go here and meet this person, then these dominoes wouldn't have fallen and you wouldn't have gotten these 10 deals from. It's crazy. Think about that. Like, I'll tell you what happened to me recently. So I just got a couple deals, one from a contractor and one from his electrician. Now, I never would have met this contractor and in turn never would have had this electrician in my house if it wasn't for me putting out some content over the last couple of years on Facebook. I was putting out content that I thought nobody, you know, that maybe nobody was listening to or nobody was seeing because it wasn't getting many, it wasn't getting much engagement from people. Uh, I'm, I'm talking specifically Facebook. But a couple of years ago, I, I had a friend from high school reach out to me and I haven't really talked to him since. But he reached out to me and he's like, hey, I understand, you know, you're doing some big things in the real estate world. It seems like you're the guy in Salt Lake City and I would love to buy an investment property in Salt Lake. He had since moved out, um, lives in California. So I'm like, okay, cool. That's awesome. You know, I start helping him. We're looking for, for some multifamily investment property. And, and that was cool. He got a place under contract. And because he lived in California, he sent a contractor in Salt Lake that he knew who used to work with him down in California. He sent this contractor to meet me at the inspection so that he could have his contractor take a look and give him, give him a rundown of how much it would cost to do certain updates. And so I got to know this contractor, we exchanged information and, you know, I really didn't have any need for a contractor for, for quite a while. Well, I end up helping this friend from high school. We close a transaction and it was one of the biggest I've had in the last couple of years. It was a fourplex. He got an amazing investment property and it was one of my, you know, it was very lucrative. So that was cool. Fast forward six months after that, I still had the business card from his contractor my wife and I are looking at doing some home improvements. So we called up his contractor, got a bid from him. You know, we ended up hiring this contractor. First off, had I not been putting out content on Facebook so that this friend knew I was doing real estate and had the impression that, that I was one of the good ones, this contractor never would have met me. So he wouldn't have gotten the business, but we have this contractor out. We hire him, you know, he's doing some stuff and he, he knows that I'm a real estate agent and that I was a real estate agent for his friend. He pulls me aside one day. He's like, hey, you know what? I think the time's right for me to buy a house. Um, you know, what do I need to do? So I refer him to my lender and, you know, the ball is rolling on finding him a house and his price range is up there. And, and then totally unrelated, the very next day, his electrician, you know, he hears me on the phone. I'm, you know, helping somebody who's moving to Salt Lake City. And he's like, oh, you sell houses? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know what? 2018 is my year to buy a house. I've been renting my whole life. It's time to buy. Can you help me? And so I have these two deals. They haven't closed yet, but nonetheless, I have these two deals. And if you look back at that thread that connects them, it's pretty mind boggling. What if one of those had not happened? What if I didn't show up to that inspection? What if I had, you know, if I wasn't there for whatever reason, what if my friend in California never knew that I was a real estate agent in Salt Lake? You know, what if I had never hired this contractor to come do some work at my house? It's crazy to think about. You're probably wondering, okay, cool. Yes, that's a great story. But what can I do about that? You know, how can I make that stuff happen? Because you never know it, that that stuff's going to happen, right? Here's the moral of the whole thing. You've got to get out there. You have to get out there. You have to be talking to people. You have to be moving. You have to be doing things. If you're sitting around in your office trying to plan all the time and put stuff out online. Like, you know, sure, maybe that's good, but you've got to get out there, talk to people, meet people in any context. Maybe you're just going to a, a basketball game, right? And talk to the person that's next to you. And I don't mean say, hey, I'm a realtor. If you, you know, here's my business card. Please don't do that. Please don't be the douche, but just talk to people. You know, it, what you do for a living will probably come up, but just be a cool person, you know, be a good personality, like just be friendly with people at the grocery store, at movies, sporting events, your kids' soccer game Saturday morning. I mean, whatever it is, just get out there. Just talk to people, meet people, because you never know what's what interactions are going to lead to 
business. You never know. But if you're just sitting around waiting for something to fall into your lap, that's never going to happen. You have to get out there. Movement, movement, movement. If you really understand what I'm telling you, you'll see that this is a way long-term to generate a massive amount of business. If you can just get out there, talk to people, meet people, be friendly. You never know what's going to happen. And that's why you have to be consistent with it. I hope that's helpful. I think it is. It's always extremely helpful to me personally to remind myself of that. Because again, had I not done certain things or met certain people or shown up for that home inspection or you know, put out content on Facebook that let my friend know that I was in real estate, none of that would have happened. It's crazy. Now, this is where we're going to do the massive Q&A for the week. Now, for this week's massive Q&A, we're going to go to the Snap Pack group where Mr. Rory Pitts, a real estate agent in Puyallup, Washington. That's right, Rory. I can pronounce it Puyallup, just outside Seattle. He asked a great question, scheduling social media content. How do you schedule your content? Should you use something like a, a content calendar? How do you plan out the content that you're going to put out on social media? Fantastic question. Now, Rory, my answer is probably going to be different than you might hear from a lot of people. So I do not use a calendar per se. What I do is I use a Trello board or the notepad on my iPhone or Mac, and I'll just write down ideas. I'll write down topics. I don't necessarily have a calendar where I say, okay, on Thursday, snap for 30 minutes. Friday, Instagram story between 2 and 2.15. I don't do that. Now, maybe I should. That might help me be a little bit more consistent with putting out content. But like we talked about in episode four last week the, with Facebook, Facebook's algorithm is changing. So putting out content daily, unless it's absolutely amazing, don't do it. You don't need to put out content just to put out content the way you did before. So that makes things a little bit easier. Um, but you need to spend a little bit more time putting together the content, being more thoughtful and intentional about what you're doing. Now, in terms of scheduling it, I'll just kind of refer to my my list and put stuff out then. But the honest answer is most of the stuff that I put out on social media is spur of the moment. I'll just have an idea and I'll just do it. Now, sometimes like if I just put out something on Instagram, I don't want to, you know, if I have another idea 20 minutes later, I don't want to put it out right then. So I'll then I'll put that idea on that list and then I'll get to it the next day. Now I know that Katie Lance, she did an article a little while back and it, she shared her content calendar because that works for her and that works for a lot of people because sometimes calendars work for people. If you need more structure like that, great. Use a content calendar. I know Katie Lance and her website, she has one. So Google Katie Lance content calendar. I'm sure you could find it that way. Here's the thing with the content calendars. You want to make sure that you're not too dependent on it and that you're not too rigid with what you've planned. Here's what I mean by that. In 2017, remember Facebook Live came out, Instagram Live, Snapchat was changing all these things. Back in September, I believe it was, Twitter went from 140 characters to 280. So what I mean is that there's constantly things changing and new things happening. So if you're too rigid with your calendar and what you have planned, you could totally ignore some new feature some new technology that could really help you knock it out of the park. Like if you if you had a content calendar for 2017 and you you stuck to it to a T and you ignored Facebook Live, or if you were big on Twitter and you ignored you know the extra the doubling of the characters that, that were available, that's dumb. Like you, you've got to be able to roll with the punches. So use your calendar as a loose guideline and not so much as I must do this and nothing else. Because that rigidity, you know, being so stuck in it like that is going to prevent you from making pivots that could be very, very beneficial to your business. Hopefully that helps. And on the next episode, episode number six, we're going to be talking Facebook Messenger bots with Kelvin Krupiak of Red Peak. You guys might recognize Kelvin. He used to be over at Easy Agent Pro. Now he's out on his own uh, helping real estate agents with their marketing. But he put out this amazing article about step-by-step step, how to create a Facebook messenger bot to help you get more business, to kind of automate lead response, automate a lot of things just to make it easier on the consumer to reach you. We're going to do some cool stuff next week. Stay tuned. But if you've been wondering, hey, what's this Facebook messenger bot thing all about? We're going to tell you exactly how to do it. And we're going to show you how it works. 
Kelvin's helping me to get mine dialed in. I'm probably going to have a, a bot set up on the Massive Agent Podcast Facebook page just so you guys can go to it, play around with it, and see how it works and get some ideas for how you can implement it too. That'll be episode number six. Stay tuned next week for that. Thank you so much. Again, guys, my name is Dustin Brome. I am a real estate agent in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am a co-founder of the Snap Pack Live Real Estate Group on Facebook, a group of about 3,000 agents around the country, really around the world, who are all focused on real estate marketing. It's an awesome community. If you're new to this podcast, if you're new to, uh, to me, if you had no idea who I was, Go over to the Snapback group, join it. It's really like an extension of this podcast and the and the real estate marketing stuff that we talk about here. Um, it happens on a regular basis over in that group. Okay, before we wrap this thing up, just one more reminder. If you want to get in on that contest for the $100 Amazon gift card, there's two ways to enter. The, the first one is the biggest help to me in this podcast. So if, if, if we've given you any value whatsoever, it would mean the world to us and be very helpful to us if you would go to iTunes and leave us an honest review. Screenshot that review. Also, if you share a link to one of our episodes or to the podcast itself in a real estate Facebook group or on your business page, screenshot that too. Each one will get you an entry to the contest for the $100 Amazon gift card. Thank you guys so much. Now go out there and sell some houses.